<laughs> that class is at the end of the training. All right. Speed attraction. 2.0. <laughs> Which starts with speed attraction one. So how many of you, this is your first training with this weird dude in a vest? Oh my God, look at all the new faces, fresh meat, you poor suckers. All right. All right. So my name is David Snyder, and I've been presenting here at HypnoThoughts uh, pretty much since the beginning. And today's class, I have a, I have a, I'm a licensed acupuncturist, I'm a certified trainer in neuro-linguistic programming. Uh, I've been doing NLP since forever. I've authored over 15 different products, actually a heck of a lot more than that now, on various forms of human influence, from hypnotherapy to conversational hypnosis to attraction and relationship work. Uh, in 2005, I was actually voted one of the top 10 attraction experts by Art of Approaching and SeductionLayer.com magazine. And recently, some weird herd of people decided to vote me as the number two NLP dude in the world. And I blame you for that. Because <laughs> now everyone hates me. <laughs> and I'm very insecure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you can tell by the vest, right? Uh, my, my, I, always, I started on the fringe. I've worked my way to mainstream. Now I'm working my way somewhere back to the middle. And, and the reason I, I, I say that is because the technology I'm going to share with you today started in, in one of the places that at least at the time when I was learning it, was not something you talked about in open company. It was called the seduction community. Now, just for the record, I hate that word. I despise that word. Because it implies that you're going to induce somebody to do something that's not in their best interest or something they're going to regret later. I don't like that word. So I don't use it much. But... For getting your attention, it works really well. I do prefer the, the term attraction, though, because attraction means a lot of things in a lot of different contexts. But one of the things that I have discovered, and the technology that we're going to be sharing with you, has exploded beyond just the narrow, the narrow continuum in which it was developed. Like so many things that have come from that community, the power of it, when you take it out of that context and move it into other contexts where any human being needs to communicate with an, and connect with another human being is off the charts. Anybody here human? Raise your hands if you're a human being. Okay, if you're human, this will work for you. If, if you're not human, you might as well get the fuck out now because it ain't gonna matter, right? <laughs> okay, uh, a couple of disclaimers for those of you who this is my, your first time with me. First of all, <laughs> Apparently they know, oh shit, something's coming, right? Um, if c profanity, colorful metaphors, swear, uh, incorrect, politically incorrect language, or the word boobies offends you, you should probably beat feet out the door now, okay? If this means I know the answer, this means I don't, this means, oh shit, I hope he doesn't call on me next. <laughs> and I will. Right? My way of asking for a volunteer is usually, looks, usually amounts to something like, oh, you're fresh. <laughs> right? uh, if I do ask you to come up, um, if you come up, you are consenting to be videoed. Um, usually during the speed attraction and advanced conversational hypnosis workshops, I don't call up a lot of volunteers. The reason being is because when people come up onto stage, they go into volunteer mode, which means they start, expect, they start responding the way they expect, they want me, I think they should. So usually what I do is I just start conversing, conversing with people in the audience. Because, and, and just a standard operating procedure. When you watch me talking to somebody, don't watch me. Don't watch me. Watch the person I'm talking to. Watch their responses. Listen to their words and how they respond to what I say. Now, I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know who it's going to be with. This room got really full all of a sudden. Holy shit, now I'm getting nervous. <laughs> so, let me explain a little bit about where this, I, I, wanted, I wanted to tell you where this comes from because I wanted to be up front with you, okay? Not that I'm ashamed of it, I'm proud of it because one of the things you can always count on is the creativity of a horny male, okay? Just ingenious stuff that we, we will do to, to learn how to understand women better. Now, I say that, but the protocol I'm going to teach you was designed by women 
to be used on men. <laughs> yes. And I had to tweak it a little bit for both genders to benefit, because I am from California and we're equal that way. <laughs> right? uh, so the first thing that we're going to un understand is that when we talk about trust and intimacy and connection. Now, I say this is 2.0 because over the past 12, no, 18 months, I've come across some other things that I think make this even more bulletproof. You don't need it, but if you add this in, the science behind it is rock solid. So we're going to start with one thing first and foremost. You've got to learn to be playful. In any context, in any environment, within the, you know, what's acceptable, you've got to learn to be playful and fun. Because the fastest way to make any human being feel something is to feel it first, is to change the way you feel. So we're going to talk a lot about something called state control. Now there's only, in, in my trainings specifically, there's only two trainers I know, including myself, that actually drill you on state control. They teach you how to go in and out of any emotional state at will. His name is Mark Cunningham, and I learned it from him. And I've taken it and gone in my own direction. But he's actually floating around this training somewhere. So if you see Mark, wave at him and say thank you. Right? Um, but we've got to learn to be playful. And in fact, I downloaded a video not, about a year or so ago. I shared this information at the last training that even in a, in a, in a very tense, hostile environment like hostage negotiation, the ability to be playful and lighthearted actually increased successful outcomes by 31%. When you become more playful, when you get, learn to have fun and generate those feelings of lightheartedness in yourself, you automatically gain at least 30% more access to your natural resources. And because you feel that way, the mirror neurons and the people you're conversing with start to pick that up and mirror it also. And pretty soon you fall into a resonance together. Now that's science, that's, that's not mumbo jumbo, that's not auras and all that cool stuff. Although I know some of you are into that, right? It's science, it's neuroscience. So everything that I'm going to teach you has a scientific background to the most part. Where I can, where I can point you in that, I will. Where I won't, I won't care because I'm a neurolinguistic programmer and we don't care about science. We just care about what works, okay? Um, is there anybody else besides me warm? Okay. A little? Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually do, a little, we're gonna do something a little bit different than I did last year. We're going to play with state control right off the bat because I think we need to understand that we have tremendous, tremendous ability to go into and out of altered, or not altered states, well, they're all altered. Everything we do is altered. But to control our emotions in a bunch of different ways. The fastest way to do that is through your posture and your breathing. Posture. How many people here would like to be more charismatic? Okay. How many people would like to be able to turn it on and off like a switch? You know, there are certain people in the world who can do that. There was a very famous star, uh, movie star back in the, was it the 50s or 40s? Marilyn Monroe? 50s, right? Now, her real name was Norma, Norma Jean. And Norma, she could walk the subway as Norma, and nobody would give her a second look. But whenever she wanted to, she could flip the Maryland switch, and there she was, right? Other people can do that too, okay? In fact, there's been a whole bunch of courses related to it, but a lot of it on the physiological side goes back to your posture and your breathing. For every psycho-emotional state you have, you have a corresponding posture and physiology that activates it. You wanna see someone get out of depression really quick? Change their posture. I had one guy, um, in my clinic in Solana Beach, which we've now run, we're going on 12, 12, 13 years now, where we specialize in treating physiological illness that has as its roots repressed emotion. I'm a licensed acupuncturist in the state of California. I'm certified in Bankston Energy Healing. I'm a certified practitioner in, uh, well, you guys know about neurolinguistics, but you also uh, DNA theta healing, advanced theta healing, pranic therapy, pranic psychotherapy. I got more energy healing credentials than McDonald's sells hamburgers. Okay, and we integrate it all at the clinic. We do, I don't get, I, wait, I get like three weight loss clients a year. I mean, I get, I get cancer, Parkinson's disease, you know, all these more in-depth and I think interesting cases, right? So we have, a, everything we do is all in high percentage technique. We don't have time for things 
that don't really get things done in the, in the most efficient amount of time possible. Normally what I like to do is I like to go around and just ask everybody what you want to learn, but it's just not going to work out that way. So before I launch into the state control stuff, let me just get a few things out of the way if I could. Would that be all right? Okay. First of all, you may notice that A, there is a yellow piece of paper on your chair. That, is, that says, where the fuck is David now, in a more politically correct way. Right? It has a listing of all the events and all the breakouts I'm going to be teaching for this convention, as well as the three-day post on sensuality enhancement, which is all about creating an environment of intimacy, trust, and connection, and exploring erotic fantasies and things like that. It's not, more of the, it's not like the BDSM fetish community stuff. That's, other people do that. Our stuff, my stuff is more vanilla. You know? <laughs> Stop it, Tito. Stop teasing me. Damn it. <laughs> um, but that, if you want to know where my stuff is, what I'm doing, that's, that's what that is for. Um, in your red tablets there, if you guys will open that up for me. That's another free gift for you. If you need to make notes or whatever, if you open that up, you'll see a little gift card in there. And this is cool, I think, anyway. Of course, I made it. Um, says a um, free gift for you, VIP discount card. This card is good for 50% off any product on my website or any live training event. Okay? So my, uh, the average price for my training starts at 975 and just goes up. So if anybody wants to come out and hang, you need to activate this card. To activate this card, you go to www.nlppower.com forward slash HTL2017. Yes? That's just uh, individual products, not your uh, packages? This does not go with any other offer. Okay, so if each discrete package or discrete program or product, this will work for. However, well, let me finish this first. When you, en when you go to this page and you enroll, you'll also get a free 30-day unlimited access to seven years of archived mastermind mentoring video. Okay, uh, in 2010, I started probably the world's longest running NLP mastermind, NLP and hypnosis mastermind mentoring session. It's a live training. It's not a certification track. We meet on the third Saturday of every month. And I literally, when they come in, it's not, you're not going to get a certificate from it. It's about people who want to fix a certain aspect of their life, get the skills that they need to go out and apply it right then and there. So I literally, when you come in, I go, what do you want to learn today, Jerry? What do you want to learn? What do you want to learn, Joseph? What do you want to learn? What do you, and I'm going to write all their stuff up on the board. I look at what they've written, or what I've written. I find all the connecting threads. And for the next four hours, I drill you on those skills until you can do them in your sleep. Okay? We have run that program nonstop, continuously since 2010. We have videotaped every session every session, and we've archived them on the NLP Power website, all seven years of it. There are thousands of hours of material there for you to watch for free. Okay, so you get a free 30-day trial. If you want to stay in after that, after that, you'll have, it's just $99 a month. You can cancel it at any time. But for those of you who want to like to binge watch our stuff, not because I know you guys don't do that, right? Now, I will warn you, we did edit it somewhat. We edited out all the dead space as much as we could. But remember, the content is member-driven. It's not me saying, we're going to cover this today. It's me saying, Amir, what do you want to learn today? Right? So you'll see a lot of overlap on some of the content. But you'll see me teaching things and hear me teaching things and tweaks to things you'll never see on a YouTube video. Right? So if you like that kind of stuff, most of that stuff has never seen the light of day outside of the archive. You guys have, it's my gift to you for just coming out here and filling a frickin' room. Thank you all so much for that. Give yourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> for those of you, because I am traditional, there is Kit Kats at the back of the room. <laughs> right? There is Kit Kats at the back of the room. Um, let's see if there's any other things. If this is the scope of everything I would like to just download into your brains. We have time for this. So my commitment to you is this, and, I, and you, know guys, you guys who were in the, in the breakout yesterday know I am famous for pushing the limits on the time they give me. <laughs> I will take you as far as I can with the material that we can cover today, and I'll show you where to go for more if you would like more. Would that be fair? Okay. 
Last piece before we get into content and state management. I want you to open up your little red notebooks. On the first piece of paper, hold it long ways so you have lots of writing surface, I want you to write your name clearly and your email address and please a phone number. And then what I would like you guys to do is rip that sheet off and pass them to the center aisle. And Tina, where's Tina? Will you collect them as they come to the end, please? And the reason for that is because is I have one final gift that we will do at the end of the session. And we will be doing something similar to this at every breakout throughout the convention. This is my course catalog. I'll wait till you guys are done writing. When you're done writing, just look up here. Cool. Just pass it to the end there and Tina will come along and fix it up. Cool. The reason we're doing this is because at the end of this training, We'll be holding a raffle. This is my product and events calendar for 2017 and 2018. In this, on the third page or fourth page of this is the, uh, the thing everybody loves. It's called the David Screaming Supreme Seminar DVD Deal Mondo Supremo I Want It All Package. And what it is, is any two live events that I have scheduled, either for 2017 or 2018, any two full-length courses, video courses, in my catalog, valued at $14.97 or less, and any five smaller digital video products. It's a huge package. It's worth over $7,000. One of you today is going to walk away with it. Thank you. I'm very happy to Okay? And we will be doing this at every single breakout. Limit one per customer. Right? So if I forget, remind me. You know. And by the way, these packages, once you have them, they don't expire. I've had people get this at like back in 2015. They still have a training pending because their, their schedule changes or whatever. So it, once you're in the system, it doesn't expire. You don't have to pick your courses right away. You can just email me and tell me which ones in here you want, and I'll activate them within your members area. It's that fast and that simple. Okay? Am I so what? Is the plane ticket include for your no. <laughs> Yeah. Plane oh, the plane ticket, no. <laughs> Gotta draw the line somewhere! <laughs> right? All right, very cool. So, let's talk about state control. First and foremost, when I first created, uh, do we collect all the names? We got it, excellent. So, when, when we create, when, when, when I first learned this, now the book that I derived the protocol we're going to be working from is, is called Love Trances by a guy named Craig Ravinsky. Now, I don't know if Craig learned it from some of the more nefarious people in the seduction world. All I know is that Craig wrote a great book for women to use on men. And like all great attraction techniques, most of the things that work best on women are the things they came up with themselves to use on us. <laughs> right? Where are all my... Okay. So the book is called Love Trances. If you can get it on Amazon, for those of you who are into conversational hypnosis, um, I think it's really good. His name is Craig Rovinsky. Rovinsky. R-O-V, that looks like a J, Rovinsky. So that's the first place. Now I got the, the inspiration for this from his book. And then I started playing with it, and it turned out it was a tremendously useful framework for creating conversation anytime anywhere. So I started playing with it. I, at that time I was involved in a mastermind which was predominantly female. It was uh, Lisa Sasevich's uh, Sales and Authenticity and Success Mastermind. So I was like in a room of 500 very highly intelligent, highly successful women and three other men. <laughs> it's a suck world. <laughs> but it turns out that this particular protocol is tremendously good for creating a very powerful intimate connection bordering on love in as little as 20 minutes. 
Now, I look at the, the archetype of romantic connection, or the, 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 the process of romantic connection, as the archetype for all social interactions. Okay? And so anything that, we c that, that causes one plus one to equal three, if you can get that metaphor, right, can be used in any interaction where two people need to come together for a common purpose. Think networking, prospecting, turning a prospect into a client. I, teach, I coach and teach and consult with about 40 personal injury attorneys. They use this on their prospective clients. They also use it in voir dire. They win the court case before it even hits the trial because they connect so powerfully with the jurors, they can turn a bad juror into a good juror. Okay? That's how powerful this is. Okay? Remember this, all emotions are trances. All emotional states are trance states. All a trance state really is, is a combination of absorption and narrowing focus of attention that, that gives access to certain resources and perceptions while moving you away or eliminating the ability to perceive others. Okay, that's all a trance is. Human beings are trance machines. We do this all the time. The problem is, is that we don't know how to recognize it when we're not, when we're not you know, doing some kind of formal hypnotic induction. So one of the things that we need to first understand is all emotions are trance states. The greater the neurological arousal, the more rapidly the conscious mind checks out. In other words, the more intense the emotions, the more rapidly your filters change. Does that make sense? Okay. So, first person we've got to start with is us. We've got to learn to control our state. We've got to get fun. We've got to get playful. How many, by a show of hands, can feel good for no fucking reason? That's not good enough. Everybody stand the fuck up. <laughs> All right, first and foremost, I want you to do something with me. I'm going to have you do a couple of things with me. Is that okay? You guys want to do some stuff with me? Like, oh shit, what's he gonna have us do? I heard about this guy on television. All right, I want you to remember a time in your life when you saw something you really wanted. I mean, really wanted. And you decided, first and foremost, that you were gonna get it no matter what. I want you to step into that moment. I want you to see what you saw, hear what you heard, feel what you felt, smell and taste what you smell and you taste. Most importantly, my friends, I want you to stand the way you were standing. You saw it, you decided to make a plan, you worked that plan, you nailed it, home run. I want you to remember that moment of victory. Remember that moment when you knew you nailed it, you were a winner. Let those feelings come flooding back. Stand that way. Now what I want you to do just for fun, I want you to notice where in your body you feel it and point to it for me. Go ahead, don't be bashful. First impression, that's right. Notice there's a color connected to that feeling. What's that color, first impression? If you don't tell me, just tell yourself, it's all right. Now I want you to imagine a big ball of that energy floating above your head right here, right now. I want you to notice how the feelings in your body shift and change as with every breath you take and every beat of your heart, that ball of energy and that color begins to grow. It begins to expand, it begins to fill the room from floor to ceiling, from wall to wall and all points in between. Note how it, notice how it wraps itself around you like a big, awesome, motivating, energizing, unstoppable force of success and good feelings. And then notice how the feelings in your body shift and change again as you breathe that energy through your entire being, from the top of your head to the tips of your toes and all points in between. Let it fill you up like water fills up a bottle, like fluid fills up a test tube, like hot air or helium fills up a balloon. Anchor it in so fully and so completely that it's impossible to turn off. When you know it's impossible to turn off, try to turn that shit off and notice what happens instead. Oh shit, you're stuck being winners now. Damn it! Now, just for fun, remember that place where it started. Point to where you feel it again. Imagine there's a picture floating in the space around you that represents that amazing feeling. And if we're floating somewhere in the space around you and you could reach out and touch it, reach out and touch it for me. That's right. Take both of your hands. Trace the outline of that picture with both of your hands so you know how big it is. Now grab the edges of it and without slugging the person behind you, make it as big as the room and notice what happens to the feeling. Oh my goodness. There are some very happy people. Some of you need a shower. Okay. <laughs> Bring it back to its original size. 
Now keep the size of it exactly the same. Slowly pull it closer to your body. Notice what happens now. Get your body involved. Trust me on this. Stronger or weaker? Stronger. Lift it up over your head. Pull it down around you like a big blanket. Oops. A little too strong there, okay? <laughs> Excellent. Stronger or weaker? Okay. Now you can have this feeling back in whatever way you want in just a minute, but for the rest of our drill, I want you to unwrap it, lift it back up over your head. Now, where you guys come from, do they have this thing called Frisbees? All right, I want you to imagine this thing's now shaped like a Frisbee, and again, without slugging the person directly behind you, throw it behind you, back behind the horizon. Whoosh! Scan your body. Notice what happened to the feeling. Joe, what happened? Oh, shit. Lift your hands up. Imagine your hands are now the world's most powerful Frisbee magnets. Suck it back in. Here's the best part. While holding this in your hands, remember this, always and forever, inside your mind, your body, your spirit, you are the god or goddess of your neurology. You're the king or queen of your universe. And you have absolutely every right and privilege and authority and permission to make any change you want for any reason that you want and keep them. What I want you to do now with that shape that you're holding is I want you to play with it. I want you to change the size, the shape, the location. Move it in your body. Move it out of your body. Notice how every time you change that shape, the feeling qualities change too. And I want you to play with it until you find the exact size and shape and location that gives you the exact feeling you want to have instead. And when you find that spot, fix it into place. Notice those feelings flowing through your body to your heart from your heart to your bloodstream. And from your bloodstream, every place your blood flows, that feeling goes. Into every nerve, and every cell, and every atom. And into the tiny DNA of your cells. And because you're hypnotist, you all know that your cells and your DNA can change. Notice how that energy begins to reprogram the DNA of your body, turning each and every cell of your body into a little success and joy and pleasure factory, making you unstoppable in every way. Notice how each cell, as it multiplies and divides, begins to, to expand those feelings. There's no need to measure it or manage it or make it happen faster. Just notice the process taking place until it becomes so strong and so powerful. Once again, it's impossible to turn off. And when you know it's impossible to turn off, try to turn it off and notice what happens instead. And then when you, know, <laughs> when you know you're awesome, open your eyes. Give yourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> That's level one. That's level one. I didn't say sit down, bitches. Because what we did there was uh, an advanced vibrational technique. But what we're going to do now is, now that you're all feeling pretty good, right? I want you to go back into the posture you had. This is the most important piece. I want you to close your eyes, bring back those good feelings again. Now we're gonna use, we're gonna only work solely with posture and breathing now. Keep your posture and summon up every ounce of will that you have and try to feel bad. Keep your posture the same, keep your posture. Notice what happens, you can't do it. Excellent. Now I want you to turn around and look at that door behind us. And you can have all of this awesomeness back in just a moment, but just to show you just how powerful your posture is. I want you to remember a time in your life when you saw something you wanted. You knew you wanted it more than anything. You made a plan. You put the plan into action. But this time, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. You didn't get it. And there was a moment when you realized it just wasn't going to happen. I want you to remember that feeling of disappointment, of loss, for lack of a better word. I want you to stand the way you were standing. Breathe the way you were breathing. Let those feelings come back. We're not going to stay here long. But for the understanding of what's going on, it's important. Now, while keeping your posture in this position, summon up all your willpower and try to feel good. Hmm. What are you noticing? Not, not really working well, is it? Now, keep your willpower strong. Hold on to that negative feeling. But shift your body back to the winning posture 
And notice what happens. That's right. Now let all those good feelings come flooding back ten times stronger than before. When you know you got that, turn around and look up here. That's where we start. Remember, anytime you want to change, you can have a seat now. Give yourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> anytime, <laughs> anytime you need to change your state, change your posture. This works on everyone I've ever done it with. Okay? It takes the minimum amount of willpower to control your posture and the maximum amount of willpower to control a strong emotion. And it will burn through your gas tank faster than anything. If you're going to approach somebody that you have never met, if you're going to go to a meeting where you have to maybe talk in front of 100 people, <laughs> right? you need to hit some serious posture work. Because the first part of you to check out is your conscious mind, your critical faculty. It's the youngest part of your brain, the neocortex. Okay? But we start creating our state from the meetup, our perceptual filters change, the way we see the world changes. If you want to go deeper into this aspect, we go real deep in CPI, we go real deep in real world hypnosis, we're going to go very, very deep, no pun intended, in the sensuality enhancement workshop at the end of the convention. <laughs> Right? Because one of the first things we have to do is we have to get playful. We have to remove the inhibitions that say this is bad and that's not. Right? And again, it's, it's, again what, it's, 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 become, it's about becoming who you want to be instead of who you were programmed to be. Does that make sense? That's where we start. But it starts with understanding your physiology. This is tactical. This you can do anytime, anywhere, under any circumstances. If you can change your posture even a little bit, when you get really good, all you, can, you, all you have to do is imagine the posture change and it'll engage. But for right now, your physiology is the most bulletproof way to control your state. And you can change the hormonal balance in your body in as little as two minutes doing this. Amy Cuddy proved this uh, and talked about it in her TED talk called Power Poses. If you have not watched this video, I highly recommend you do. Amy Cuddy, Power Poses. Now, if you're a presenter here, can you see that okay? C-U-D-D-Y. Amy Cuddy, Power Poses. There's another a great one. Um, I can't, her name is Vanessa Edwards, or Van Edwards? What is it? Vanessa Van Edwards. Yeah, uh, she's got a great video that validates even more of the stuff we do in CPI and the advanced influence trainings that we do. It's crazy, the stuff that's coming out from the sun, Vanessa Van Edwards, yeah. I'll, I'll write that later because I'm going to actually wind up erasing it anyway. So there's three poses that Amy, actually four poses that Amy researched in her, in her studies, first one of which was the victory pose. Okay? In this, in this study, what she discovered was if you hold this pose for as little as two minutes, you get a 20 to 25% bump in your testosterone, and a corresponding decrease in cortisol. So you become progressively more dominant, assertive, creative, and relaxed at the same time. When she tested people by sending them into the hardest interview she could con 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 um, construct, the people who did the power pose prior to the session scored way, way higher on the interview than the control groups did, or the people who didn't do the, po the poses at all. Okay, I, like I said, I, I consult with personal injury attorneys, and they consult with their clients and their witnesses. So I taught my clients how to do this for when they go into the courtroom. They had clients who were terrified of getting up on the stand and testifying. And what I found out later was one of the people who was terrified of testifying was actually the coach of a little league or a, a little uh, a high school football team, and they hadn't won a championship in like five years. And what he would do is between in intermissions and at halftime and before the game, he would have them hold this for two to five minutes. They took the championship that year. So if you do any kind of performance enhancement, this will get you going. Okay? This goes to charisma because chariz charismatic people are naturally assertive. They tend to take up space vertically and horizontally. Their posture is usually immaculate or very close to it. Posture and charisma go hand in hand to presence. 
Okay? These are things that are what we, I call them, for, for you they will be what we call active attractors until they become habit for you. Once they become habitual, they'll become passive attractors. They'll always be on. But they're also tactical. No matter what situation you're in, if somebody's pressing on your boundaries, you do a, a, a posture shift, and in seconds, that whole dynamic changes. What you're capable of, what you can pay attention to, what you're aware of, automatically shifts. And the only thing you have to monitor is the tendency for that negative state to draw you back to the original posture. Okay? How many of you noticed that when I asked you to try and feel bad from the positive posture, there was a little pull? Right? That's what I mean. There's a, there's a feedback loop between your psyche and your soma, your, your mind and your body. And we can inject change at either end of that and it will cycle through. But tactically, out in the field, unless you are a special forces uh, soldier, uh, an elite athlete, or, or someone who, whose mind has to be clear in very, very high stress, high stakes circumstances, you do not have the willpower to overwrite what your body wants to do, right? If your body is holding this posture, you're going to burn up your resources faster than I'll get out. But it takes a minimal amount of energy to do that and hold it. So by making you aware of it, I've given you the ability to access and utilize it. I do this between clients. I, I used to, back before I raised my prices and cut my hours, I was seeing clients 10, 15 hours a day back to back, and I only had like a five to 15 minute break between. I'd be hitting this pose every, between every single one. If you do, how many people here do affirmations? Right? Do this before you do your affirmations, they'll manifest faster. Okay? There is no place where this cannot help you. The three other poses that she worked on was what I call the Wonder Woman. Right? Um, then of, and of course, this might mean something a little bit different in San Francisco, but we'll talk about that later. Um, and of course, there's the chairman of the board, right? You ever see a chairman leaning over the, the negotiation table? Something like that. And then there's the one where you have your feet up on the desk. Now, you don't do these in the freaking waiting room, right? You do these where nobody can see you, but if you're going to approach somebody for the first time and you know who your target is, okay, hit the restroom, hold a pose for a couple of minutes, and then go make your approach, right? You're going to find out that you're going to... You as a person may or may not feel different, but the energy that you'll be sending out, the vibe that you'll be sending out to everyone around you will dramatically change. Okay? Uh, questions on that stuff. All right, I want to do one more state drill exercise just for fun. Is that, did you guys know flirting had a posture? <laughs> all right? Anybody want to show me that flirting posture? <laughs> Look at her, she's like getting all playful over here, right? And, it's, and the clue is in our language, by the way, because, you know, if people are honest and um, straightforward and people that are very reliable, how, what, how do we call them? We call them stand-up guys. They're straight shooters. They're upright. How about somebody who's evil? Okay. <laughs> what about somebody who's just a little naughty? Bent. Bent. That would be your world. <laughs> right? The posture for asymmetry or for, uh, for flirtation or playfulness is asymmetrical. When you go to like, you know, Playgirl or Hustler or Playboy, whatever, whatever gender magazines you happen to peruse, I know nobody here does that. You just read the articles. It's okay. I get it. Right? Nobody, no one of those models are doing this. Right? They're all here. Right? They're all in these asymmetrical poses. You hear a whole room crack up the minute you, you hit an asymmetrical pose. You just suddenly feel lighthearted, right? So the ability to be playful in any environment, that's why we call it flirting for, on my video, we call it flirting for fun and profit, has nothing necessarily to do with romance, although it can be used that way. Any place where you can become playful and generate and radiate that playfulness to the people around you causes people to like you more. Their defenses go down, and the, the ability to gain trust and intimacy exponentially grows. And nobody can catch you doing it. Because it's honest and it's ethical. And that brings us to the actual conversational component. This is, by and large, the most ethical, honest, complete, and satisfying way to communicate with another human being. Okay? We're going to start with something very, very simple. I'm going to give you the passcode to the human nervous system. Would that be okay? 
If you understand this, you will, get, you will become the most fascinating person in the room to whoever you're talking to. Right? But you don't want to learn that. Okay? People get all excited when I do the build-up and then I tell them what it is and they go, really? <laughs> yes. Okay. So we got the state control thing down? All right. Everybody stand up one more time. And now what I want you to do, I want, to rem I want you to fly back on the wings of time. Use your amazing imagination or memory or however you do it. I don't care. To the time in your life, that was awesome. Do it again. To a time in your life when you felt the most playful, you got it, girl. The most, if you want to be naughty, I don't care. I'm not the pleasure police. I'm not going to, you know, you can't do that. But I want you to go back to that time in your life. I'm not going to ask what you were doing. I'm not going to ask who you were with, what substances were involved, or what toys might be laying around. I don't give a shit, right? All I care about is that when you remember that time, when you see what you see and you hear what you hear and you feel what you feel, you smell and you taste what you smell and you taste, best time ever. Notice there's a place in your body where that feeling starts. You don't have to point to it. I'm not going to be... <laughs> <laughs> Some of you will, I know, it's all right. I can use my match. Oh, that's bad, I'm not going to imagine that. Anyway, notice the colors connected to that feeling, or the colors, if you will. I'd like you to notice something. I'd like you to notice a big ball of that energy floating above your head. I'd like you to notice something else. I'd like you to notice it's moving. It's spinning in a certain direction. Notice what direction it's spinning. And as an act of will, or you can use your hands if you want, reach up and make it spin in the direction that makes it even better. Double the spin. Double the speed. Double the force. Double the magnitude. Keep doubling it over and over and over again until it takes on a life of its own, until it's impossible to do anything but get stronger. And when you're ready, breathe that energy through your entire body. Slam it into your body. Let it fill you up like water fills up a bottle, like fluid fills. Oh my God, I got a bunch of naughty people now. Holy shit. <laughs> All right, let it just anchor itself in. Notice that energy works its way deeper and deeper and deeper into your neurology. Any program, any belief, any memory, any circumstance that's not in harmony with this new set of instructions, your neurology is going to begin to shed. It's going to begin to purge like a snake shedding its skin, like old software being uninstalled by newer, better, more powerful, more playful software. There's no need to measure it, manage it, or make it happen faster. Just notice that process taking place. Allow it to install itself completely. And when you know it's locked in, try to turn that shit off. And notice what happens instead. Ooh, I like this room. <laughs> now, when you're ready, open your eyes. Look immediately to the person to your right, to the person to your left. Hold out your hand, look them in the eyes, and go... <laughs> I give extra points for this shit. I want to hear noise complaints from the other rooms. Excellent. Give yourselves a big round of applause. You guys rock. Sit the hell down. Passcode to the human nervous system. You guys earned it. The most important words another human being can hear is not boo. <laughs> The most important words another human being can hear are the ones that just came out of their mouth. The ones that just came out of their mouth. And there's a reason for it. Your neurology, you guys ever heard the term neuroplasticity? Okay, in, in our profession, we throw that term around a whole lot. But we don't really think about the ramifications of it. It's about physics, it's not about biology. You see, neuroplasticity is actually an expression of a law of physics known as resonance. When two vibrating sources get in proximity to each other, they try to find a common ground, a third frequency that connects them. That is a physics principle. Every neuron in your body, every other cell in your body, is seeking to connect with every other cell in your body. Now, if your cells are trying to do that, what do you think your nervous system is trying to do? What do you think your brain is trying to do? Look at our culture today. 
how many different ways we seek connection. Think about the people in this room. Why are you here? Because you have something in common. Your neurology is moving through the world trying to find connection with itself. That's why you're all here. You have more in common than you don't. When the words coming out of a person's mouth reach your ears, NLP teaches us that we have a primary experience and then that primary experience is translated into five basic channels of information. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, and gustatory. You guys pretty much know that NLP 101. And there's a whole lot more there than NLP is giving you. But for our purposes, practical stuff, when your brain separates that into those five channels, it puts it back together holographically inside. But as it comes up to your awareness to talk about it, it goes through a set of filters, and a near infinite number of filters. It deletes information, it distorts information, it generalizes information. Till finally, what comes out of your mouth is a compressed, lossy, you guys know that term lossy? It's like if you have a big picture, right, a big like high resolution picture, and it's too big to fit through your email, you have to save it to a smaller size, and then grandma gets the picture and blows it up, and all of a sudden half the picture's gone because there's information. That's, the, that's what lossy means. Your words are lossy until they hit the other person's nervous system. And then it's like grandma looking at that lossy picture with all the stuff missing and trying to guess what should be there and put the picture back together. That's what actually happens in verbal communication. And then when we communicate with the person who just talked to us, we're responding to what we think they mean based on our own internal experience, not what they actually intended to say or to communicate. How does that relate to this? Very simple. The words, remember, every human being on the planet is seeking to connect with itself. The words that just came out of their mouth have been 100% approved by every filter they have. They know exactly what those words mean, they know what values they're attached to, what emotions and experiences they're relevant to, and they're waiting for the ping back. You guys know how radar and sonar works, right? Sends out a little pulse and then whatever bounces back, it, it knows where things are. In psychological terms we call it projection. We're projecting our internal environment onto everyone around us and assuming they do it like we do. It's called the checklist. My first course on sexuality was called Secret Orgasm Tips. And it was all about teaching men how to become any woman's ideal lover the first time they were together before they even had sex. And that's where it started. Right? Now, here's one of those watch the response moment. Men, pay attention. By the way, ladies, this works on men too. We're just more simpler. Right? We're, we're a little dense sometimes though, so you have to give us a little bit of, little bit of leeway. Ladies, let me ask you a question. If you met a man who talked to you in the way that made you feel the most understood, like they truly got you, if he knew exactly where to touch you and how, almost as if he was reading your mind, how to kiss you in the way you've always fantasized about being kissed, to caress you in that way, to take you on that fantasy that you never told anyone and yet they somehow knew it. What would you not do for that person? Look at them, guys. <laughs> That's what... <laughs> <laughs> guys, ladies, your turn. If you met a woman who could rock your world almost like she was reading your mind, all those little things that, you know, when you're by yourself in your room and you fantasize, man, I wish I could find a woman to do that, would give me this. Look at them go, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> We're a little bit more easier to spot. Right? The difference, the primary difference, both of you have a checklist. In NLP terms, it's called criteria and values. 
The criteria is the checklist. It's the conditions that have to be met in that person's neurology, the parameters of the experience that triggers a certain feeling in their bodies. Now, this is not limited to relationships at all. In fact, it was the last place it was ever applied, which is a tragedy. First place it was applied was in therapy. Then it went into the business world. And then finally, I got a hold of it and I started applying it slightly differently. Okay? You have a checklist that is connected, that has a set of conditions that need to be met. That generates a feeling state. And then we label that feeling. It could be intimacy. It could be trust. It could be respect. Doesn't matter. You have a checklist and a label for everything that's important to you. That checklist represents how you know you're getting what you believe to be the most right and a perfect way for things to be in your world. It is the foundation of your identity. You understand that? You can't talk about these things without going into a profound state of pleasure or connection and trust. Now, everything that human beings do is about feelings. You guys know this? Yes or no? Everything you think, everything you feel, everything you aspire to in life is driven by a feeling, in spite of what NLP teaches you. NLP teaches you that some people are visual, and some people are auditory, and some people are kinesthetic, and some people are somewhat olfactory, but if they washed less, they wouldn't be quite as olfactory. That's a different. But that's not really true. We're all those things. However, everybody is driven to do what they do because of feeling. It's either a feeling you want more of or a feeling you want a whole lot less of. Yes, you have visual modality stuff going on. You have auditory stuff going on and olfactory and gustatory stuff going on. But those things don't cause you to move. Those things ultimately result in you feeling a certain way that causes you to take an action. So if everything human beings do is driven by feeling, why don't we just start there? That's why I taught you state control first. Right? You have these things in your body called mirror neurons. The source book that I used for this was called Mirroring People by an uh, Italian researcher named Jacoboni. Um, you can probably am find it on Amazon or Google it. And another aspect of your neurology called proprioception. Your proprioceptive nervous system. Okay? These two things interact to give you your own personal radar. Ladies, you ever walked into a crowded bar or a place where people are getting together and you're, from across the room you feel the ickiness rising on the back of your neck? <laughs> right? And you turn around and there's some dude over in the corner going, oh, Nurse Nancy, Nurse Nancy. Right? Thank your proprioceptive nervous system. Your proprioceptive nervous system monitors at least six different kinds of information in your environment. Oops. Thank you. I'm apparently losing money again. Right? Um, one of which is electromagnetic fields. Now, just as an aside, a little sidebar, your heart, the largest, most powerful rhythmic source in your body, radiates an electromagnetic field that can be detected with instruments eight feet in diameter. What do we say about all resonant sources? They want to sink. Is anybody here sitting within eight feet of another human being? <laughs> Guess what's happening? It can't not happen. The longer I keep you together, the more in sync you become. Okay, and I, we have cool ways in our trainings to, to test that, literally. You can get people start swaying back and forth. They have no idea it's happening. Because it's not about being consciously aware of it. It's about synchronizing with another neurology like two Bluetooth synchronizing. Okay? How many people have seen me do that stuff or have done that stuff? Raise your hand. Talk to these people. I don't have time to demonstrate it now because I want to get to the, the newer stuff, but I need to get to the primary stuff first. Right? Uh, but we literally bring people, we get in sync, 
and we start making them do all, swaying back and forth, and it's, it's bizarre, right? Because the neurologies communicate. There's always an interaction of information going back and forth. And for most of us, now that's not going to be any true any longer for the people in this room. I've given you the window in. What you do with what I've given you in the first section of this training is all up to you. I just gave you the keys to accessing the Force. You're all Jedi in training now. The more you work with that energy, the more you work with those techniques, the more rapidly your neurology will evolve. The more neuroplastic you will become and the more things you will be able to do with it. Okay? I'm not kidding you. Okay? The world according to David is a pretty cool place, but it freaks people out if you don't have the right training. <laughs> Okay, moving right along, going back to, that's why I started with the feelings, because you can actually tap into person from across the room using your posture and physiology. There will be a feeling shift in your body that lets you know you've accessed the system. At that moment, any emotional state you engender in yourself will start to prime their neurology to go into the same state. Either the same state or a complementary state. For instance, when I say uh, same or complementary, what I mean is using attraction as an example. If you start generating, how many people ever felt attractive? Anybody ever felt attractive? Okay, not attracted, that's different. Feeling attractive gives you dominance in a frame. Feeling attracted puts you one down. Okay? When you engender the feeling of attractiveness in yourself, when you stand that way, you walk that way, you will start to create a, feel, a, comp a compensatory feeling or a counter feeling in another individual that will either cause them to feel attractive as well or to go into a state of attraction. That's what I mean by a, a complementary state or the same state, right? And then depending on which one they go into, and you can usually read that by their posture, their ventral orientation, and their pupil dilation. Um, they're either going to go into a better feeling state. They're going to feel good, right? But it also changes the, the, the frame and the filters you bring to the interaction. It's all done non-verbally, and you don't need to be right next to the person. Although when we train you, we start right here. And then we, eventually you can do it from across the room. When you get really good, you can do it from across the planet. Okay? But this is all tactical stuff. Control your own state first, and then everything else kind of falls in line. How many people here know what the emotional refractory period is? Raise your hands if you've heard of that. If you haven't, the book to reference is called Emotions Revealed by Dr. Paul Ekman. He was the consultant for a show called Lie to Me. If you like that show, there's a lot of good science there. But in his book, Emotions Revealed, Dr. Ekman identifies a phenomenon within our neurology called the emotional refractory period. And what that is... Remember I said a trance state is a set of perceptual filters combined with a set of, with absorption and focus? You guys remember when I said that? What Dr. Ekman discovered is when, emotion, when a human being experiences an emotional state change, the perceptual filters in their mind shift. So let's say you're in an environment, uh, and again, this is a completely contrived example, but just to get the point across. Let's say you're in an environment, you're in a good mood. You go into an environment and there are 10 units of data in that environment. Right? Five of them, uh, yeah, let's do this. Five of them are good, positive. They match the state you're in. Five of them, bad, or not matching the state you're in. Guess which ones you're oriented on first? If you're in a bad state, yes, you'll go here. If you're in a good state, you'll go here. You're going to sort for the elements in your environment that match the state you're in, strengthen it or re-trigger it. Anybody here ever been in an argument with somebody? Raise your hands if you've ever been in an argument with somebody. The rest of you are fucking lying, I get it, it's okay. Right? How many people have had the experience where you have this he said, she said, knock down, drag out, fight, whatever it was, and finally you settle the argument, peace. And then for the next 10, 15, 20 minutes later, anything you say pisses them off again. <laughs> Welcome to the wonderful world of the emotional refractory period. You all do it. It's just a question of how long you stay there. When you start understanding the full scope of state control, you can start harnessing the emotional refractory period, completely non-verbally, to prime a person's neurology, to parse your language, and pay attention to the aspects of your communication that match what you want them to feel. 
That's a skill set. And I teach it to personal injury attorneys who are pulling down seven consistent seven-figure verdicts from hostile judges. Okay? Not just for going out and finding your next boopsie or biff. Right? When you're doing this in law enforcement, you're doing this in interrogation, you're doing this in a prospect. Like I have a 90 plus percent close rate for my clients. People coming in, 9 out of 10 who come in become clients. The others get on a waiting list, they eventually become clients. And I teach this to my, to my students. It doesn't fail because it's based on these kinds of things. You need to, remember your job as a hypnotist is how many people here actually see clients? All right, how many people want to see clients? Okay, you're all a special kind of stupid. <laughs> so am I, because my demographic falls into one of three people, one of three kinds. People who want to fix their own shit. That's the biggest one, right? A lot of money, a lot of opportunities there. Then there's the second highest demographic. People who want my help to fix their shit. Slightly smaller demographic, higher price tag, <laughs> right? And then there's the elite, the special kind of stupid. They want to go around fixing other people's shit. Right? Really smaller demographic, much bigger price tag. Right? And it's okay, because that's not something you choose. That's something that chooses you. And we all know this, don't we? We can't not do it. Right? You can use this with, at every single level. You can use this with every single person that you meet. But the first thing you need to understand is that the most important word, see, see how I got back to that? The most important thing that they can hear the moment they meet you is their own words. Their own words. Questions on that? Yes, sir? Say they're seething in silence. How do you give them their own words? <laughs> seething silence back. <laughs> Kenneth Cleveland, one of the, who I think is the god of conversation hypnosis, tells a story. Kenneth Cleveland, maxpersuasion.com. This is from his, one of his early, early versions of Max Persuasion, which I think was actually better than a lot of the stuff he's put out since. Um, and I really binged on that one for a long time. But Kenrick tells a story back when he was selling memberships to a health club. And in that time, roids were a big thing. And there was this professional bodybuilder, and Kenrick's manning the front desk. And this huge bodybuilder comes storming out to the lobby, goes, God damn it! There is no toilet paper in the men's room. And Kenrick's like, and then his training kicked in. He went, oh. He went, God damn it! There's no toilet paper in the men's room. You are a good customer. You're respected. You come here every day. You deserve to have toilet paper in the men's room. The bodybuilder goes, wait a minute, calm down. <laughs> Match their state. The neurology seeks what? Itself. Now, a lot of people take that idea of matching state to mean if you get ang if they, somebody's angry, you get angry too. But they get angry at the person who's angry. No. You get angry at what they're angry at. And then you're no longer an outsider. Now you're walking together. Huh? Suppose, Suppose it's me. Suppose the person is angry at you. Well, then match it. If they're angry at me, say, you know what? Fuck. I'm an asshole. I'm sorry. You have every right to be fucked. I'm pissed at me. I can't believe I did that. You see? Match their state. Don't, don't use your words to change their state. Use your state to change their state and then follow it up and, re and redirect it with your words. Right? Data, does, data bounces off the neocortex, especially depending on, on the level of emotional arousal that you have. Because the higher that emotion gets, the more data-driven you, you do not become. The more emotional arousal hits your system, the more you default to heuristic thinking. Just word of mouth, pre-programmed things that eliminate thinking. So if you try to, argue, if you try to logic with someone who's pissed off, you're just going to piss them off more. Okay? Regardless of whether you're actually right. You understand that? If you want to be powerful, you must master state control. 
And then 80% of your persuasion is done before you open your mouth. Yes, sir. So, say you're in a conflict, uh -huh. in which case you don't appreciate the way the other person is acting towards you mm -hmm. and don't feel they're acting ethically towards you. Mm -hmm. How do you keep your own um, cool, composure? Well, cool composure, whatever, belief system? Change your physiology. Okay. First thing you do is the minute somebody hits you with a barrage of emotion, the first thing you do is got to change your physiology. Okay, because the physiology puts up a little wall, keeps that energy from actually hitting your nervous system in a way. Now, people will hit you, people will blindside you. Don't get me wrong. But the understanding of physiology means no one can ever push your buttons for long ever again. They can take you by surprise. But the minute you become aware of that state, fix it. Fix it. Right? Now, there's other things you can do with this. In CPI, my conversational persuasion and influence training, we have in the state control module, we have techniques called master and commander and rock star, right? In the book, Love Trances, that I told you about, uh, Craig writes about this woman who, you know, on a 10 scale, he's doing man speak, right? Was probably about a five to seven. And yet, whenever she would go out to these nightclubs and bars and things like that, she would have men flocking to her in droves and her friends were like nines and tens and they was like what are you doing how do you how are you doing this and Craig eventually pulled her aside and interviewed her and she said how are you getting all these men to just flock to you she goes oh that's easy she goes before I walk in I imagine that I'm a rock star and everybody's there to see me what just happened what did you feel did your feelings change? How fast? How about that? What if you could do that? Right? There's another process. How many people would like to uh, be seen as more trustworthy and confident? That'd be useful, wouldn't it? Did you know that there is a posture of, that relates to state control? We call it the open heart trust trigger. We're all gonna play. I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna let you guys actually play with this a little bit, okay? Just for fun. Um, the way it works, um, you, come here. I know she's a fan. <laughs> it's okay. So here's what we do. I actually, I'm gonna do it for you. I want you to tell me what you feel, okay? So this is, by the way, when you approach somebody, the worst place Stand right here. When you approach somebody, the worst direction to approach is head on. Okay, this is, this is confrontation. Right? Now we don't, uh, in people reading for fun and profit, which is we're going to be doing Sunday, I'm going to teach you how to interpret body language and extrapolate what's going on from across the room. You're going to be learning to, to extrapolate it in seconds. But one of the things that happens is when you, when you approach somebody, you don't want to come this way. This is too threatening. But because this is the most way you can feel contrast, I want her to feel it. So I'm just going to approach you casually. Okay? Right? This is where she felt comfortable. Now I'm going to go into what we call the open heart trust trigger. And I want you to just tell me, um, as, as I do it, what you feel. A little bit more nervous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did, what happens when I do this? It's going like, it's going like feeling more trust and confidence. Like, really? How about this? No. No, this? This is a yes, this is a no. Right? So, thank you. Give her a good round of applause. I know. Right? So the way this works, literally, and, and again, this was actually taught uh, to women to be used on men, but then a couple of guys in the car sales industry got a hold of this, and they would play games because they called it the bounce, or they would literally like, make a customer bounce back and forth by one would do the trust trigger, the other would turn it off, and they just have them going back and forth. Right? <laughs> but the way it works is if you imagine across your heart is a clear plexiglass screen okay and when you approach you it's like you want to show someone your heart what do you feel fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> right so I'm approaching normally right and then I come here feel it right 
It's, it's sub, instant. Right? You can, this, and you can't be caught because it's honest. Right? If somebody were to try to call you on this, why are you standing with such good posture? <laughs> right? Why are you using my own words? Because I want to understand you. Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> right? So um, what I want you to do is just let's take five or six minutes. All I want you to do is get into groups of like three or four and practice this. Just walk up and just do that. Once normal and then with the plexiglass screen. And, the almost, and if you want to get even further, you can imagine like a little searchlight just coming out. You're just beaming everybody. <laughs> For those of you who have low-cut blouses on, maybe you want to cover up. All right, go play, play with that for just five minutes, and we're going to come back. We're going to do after technique.